All right, let's discuss psychology. Let's do it. Ooh. Yeah. I love psychology. Yeah. I love discussing. <laughs> I love love. I love, love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we're going to be talking about five factors that lead us to, uh, like, that influence us when we're making decisions. Mm. Right. Price. Is it cool? Our mood, our oh state of mind that we're in at that moment. That's a good one. Your so, history. That's also a good one. That's the first one. So. You didn't say mine was, was good. You didn't say mine was good either. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> well, she only calls the good ones good. Oh, shit. But you pointed oh. at me when I said price. I thought you, you th I thought we connected. Well, we did connect, because I know you like the deals. Well, I do I like guess Maybe, pre I don't know, because I'm saying because those are in, the, in this it's list. It's not psychological. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, <laughs> so the first one on this list is uh, they, they number it backwards. So number five, uh, past decisions. Mm -hmm. The University of Pennsylvania researchers have found that our past judgments influence our decisions so that we remain constant. So people's memories tend to adjust to make a new experience consistent with uh, preceding decisions. So this indicates that humans subconsciously condition themselves to be self-consistent in how they remember the past. So the researchers didn't expand on the consequences of their findings, but it is worth keeping this bias for past judgments in mind when we face when we are faced with decisions. Okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Number four, yeah. chronic stress. So, uh, whether the individual is under chronic stress could push them toward a high risk, high payoff option because MIT neuroscientists, they had discovered this phenomenon after conducting a study on mice. After exposing the animals to stress, they tended to seek highly concentrated chocolate milk under stressful bright light rather than weaker chocolate milk under dim light. You're trying to get fucked up. Those mice have a shopping problem. <laughs> Can you imagine a mouse like, ah, chocolate milk, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Concentrated that was, one. Yeah, that was going through a lot right yeah. there, man. <laughs> <laughs> to blow some steam, I think. Yeah, Went down so to the bar. Like, Give me a chocolate milk double on the rocks. <laughs> yeah, so they'd rather have high risk, <laughs> high risk, high payoff. That's mm. like what happens when you're under chronic stress. So right. when you're is the high risk the under the light? Like it's really bright and hot under there, but then they're like, fuck it's it. a higher payoff because it's a more concentrated chocolate milk. So they're going through the stress because they know that chocolate milk is lit. Yeah. It's like the Hennessy for mice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it says stress is ubiquitous for both humans and animals, and it affects uh, and its effects on brain and behavior are of central importance to the understanding of both normal function and neuropsychiatric disease. Uh, impulsivity is likely to worsen patterns of behavior that produce the stress in the first place, inducing a vicious cycle. Oof. Yeah. So you gotta be careful when you're making your decisions. All right, number three is our knowledge of a subject. So, so previous knowledge of a subject clouds our decision making. It clouds it? Yes, when, when presented with new information. Hmm. Oh, it's too much. So here's, th this is what they say. In situations where people do not have background knowledge, they become more confident with the new information and make better decisions. So there's a big difference in how we interpret the information we are given and how it affects our decision making when it relates to things we already know versus when it is new or uh, an unfamiliar setting. So this finding is based on an experiment in which 4,000 participants answered a series of questions based on topics in which they had some knowledge and ones that they had none, including fictional scenarios. So participants tended to do better with the latter scenarios and so this means that to help people make better decisions, information should be tailored based on their previous knowledge. Why do they word all this so hard? I ain't gonna hold y'all, Tiff. I feel like I was in school for this whole yeah, thing. I was yeah. like, man, these people are smart. She said like ubiquitous. Kind of <laughs> I don't know what that means. They just put big words around it yeah. because it's like, it's like, hey, when you're stressed, you might make a bad decision. Hey, when you, <laughs> when, yeah, when you, when you learn more information, you make better, de better decision. Yeah. 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 Um, well, it's actually they're saying the opposite. Their subject introduced their finger into their nose and scraped out a material. From the north. <laughs> from the picking from the north and then yeah. working their way south. Uh, subject then reached down and scratched their buttock. Their left <laughs> their buttock. <one> buttock. <laughs> no, the information one, they're pretty much saying, as far as I understood it, that they that you make better decisions when you only have 
the the new information versus when you think you already know a, t a subject and then you let that previous knowledge influence your decision with the new information. Yeah, it's like my dad, like he's so used to doing something for like 30, 40 years, right? And then there's like new shit that comes out and he goes to the he's store like, and he's nah. like, nah. No, I, I can see that. I'll stick with this fucking old shit. One, one hundred percent. This yeah. is what I know. I'll just keep buying yeah, that, and yeah. don't tell me nothing new. I've, I've stopped learning. Yeah. That's why. But then when you give old people shit that doesn't have touchscreen functions, but it looks like a screen, oh. you watch old people trying to fucking touchscreen everything. Did you see that video of that old woman at McDonald's, and it was like a display of you can use the mobile app on your phone, and she was like pressing oh. the sign, and she's like, "What's up, say?" She's like, "I just want McDonald's." Oh. Like, no, it's not a phone, Nana. It's 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 paint on a side. So easy <laughs> that old people can't go back. She's like the mouse that's like, bright light, chocolate milk, give me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, number two is... The that was just number one? <laughs> no, we're going oh, back oh, five, oh, five to one. Okay, sure. okay, I was like, uh, it felt like it to me. I'm going to have to take a quiz after this. I'm nervous. Take notes. Okay. Right. Uh, number two here is the number of choices, which holy shit, Very I totally true. get this. It's, it's called analysis paralysis. It's a Netflix yeah. all day or long. Or choice I overload. It. I hate it. Um, so this, this happens when people overthink a decision and they can't make a choice because of the fact that there's just too much information or too many choices. So what ends up happening is that the, the amount of choices you have affects the decisions that you make. 100%. Yeah. Kev, if you're watching something on Netflix with your entire family, mm -hmm. And how does the room decide to stop oh. watching something if it's not that good? Because right now I got I got me and Nikki. It's pretty easy to just be like, we're not we're not in, we're not feeling it. You got a whole committee. I don't. <laughs> my children. You're assuming my children want to be part of the family. My <laughs> one son had no idea, no care in the world. Whatever we're doing, he doesn't want any part of it. My other son is like, let's watch this, and me and my wife are like, okay. Got it. Mm. That's how it works. Like one person has a strong feeling about something, That's and it will just like go happens. with it. Like my my wife's like, okay, let's watch Hoarders, or like she has like a genre. Like it's been a tough day. I want to watch Hoarders or like trash My TV. Strange Addiction. I need some trash TV. Or we come in like, hey, let's watch. Like last night we watched The Transporter Two, because it was like movie night. And like this sucks so bad. Oh really? But I Jason Statham's kicking people's asses. It's, it, the fight scenes are great. Yeah. They're like, okay, how do we write minimal dialogue yes. and then just get to a fight? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but what, the fights are worth it. But yeah. why else would you watch that movie for the dialogue? I don't know. That's right. You know what, Gio? That's a fantastic point that I didn't think about. What but we're really judging the movie. Did you watch the first one? Yes, even worse. I mean, right. It's it the same exact terrible. shit. Terrible. It's just but him you driving nice two, cars and kicking were, people's asses. Yes. It's it. Fast and the Furious. It's yeah. just it's precedes Fast and the Furious. They're like, who cares, bro? This is cool, ain't it? And I'm like, yeah, it is cool. Yep. But none of it really matters and stuff. But that's how we we get to stuff. Somebody has a strong opinion, and then we just watch it. Do you ever back out of something? Yeah, we backed out a lot of stuff. I feel like because of like this thing, there's like the I know there's more stuff out there. I don't have to watch this thing that sucks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's just like so much stuff on Netflix that I didn't know existed or whatever. It's like. Yeah. Somebody's always talking about a show we didn't hear about or whatever, so you feel like you have to like constantly watch stuff, but there's too much, man. My it's problem is I could get interested in anything, and so my dad used to like channel surf. I get so pissed because he like pause on a channel for like a minute and I get into it, and then yeah. he switch it, and then I'm like, oh fuck. And then you get, I get sucked into that thing, and then he switch it. And I'm like, God damn it. I used to watch the TV Guide channel. Remember that oh, channel? Yeah. It was like they have like a little th guy yeah. talking, and then you like watch what's happening, and then you realize you're just watching that channel. Like, man, yeah. this, this is actually a pretty good show, like just <laughs> telling us what's about to come on. <laughs> <laughs> so the channel is fantastic. You're reading every single yeah. time slot and you're like, oh, in 15 minutes. I cops again. Four, four times in a row. <laughs> a marathon of cops. That just makes me think it's Sunday. I'm shirtless, stuck to a leather couch on a hot day. Yeah. And I'm not moving and I'm watching cops. That's my hours. mom with ghost shows. Yeah. She, she keeps it on Sunday. It's just like a ghost, like a, it's like all ghost shows for like. How many ghost shows are there? There's a lot. A lot. Really? Yeah. Travel, Travel true, America. True ghost stories, haunted ghost story. It's when like, ghosts attack. Really? Kids yeah. reincarnating and stuff. I don't be messing with that ghost stuff, so I ain't really aware. Netflix yeah. don't serve it to me. With you, we don't be like, nah, bro, that's the devil. The She's either watching ghost shit or HGTV. 
dad. That's my dad's favorite channel. Which HGTV. One? He never does no projects though. Yeah. I like it. He just watches people like, oh, that's how you flip a house. That's literally me growing up. I just watched a shit ton of HGTV and the Food Network. Oh yeah. I don't do either of them. I love Food Network. That's a good argument when people are like, uh, we have to censor what our kids are watching because they're gonna like pick up all these patterns. Yeah. It's like, bro, I grew up watching the Food Channel. I don't know how to fucking cook. Yeah, killing people. And she was huffing. Sure. She watched yeah. people flip a house. And she was like. Yeah, I was huffing. <laughs> She was like, that's how you do it. Yeah, we're not gonna drop it today, man. It's a whole thing. It's next time we won't bring it up. But you guys can make fun of it because it's funny. Oh no, my kids are gonna do Call of Duty in real life, but but they watch DIY shit and never do it. Yeah. That's a good argument, you know? It's a great yeah, argument. For sure. Alright, last one here on the list is uh, remember we're talking about factors that affect your decision making. The number one on this list is how hungry you are. Oh, fuck really? yeah. Really? Yes. Oh, fuck because yeah. Do not make decisions when you're hungry because psychologists have found that hunger significantly alters people's decision making, making them impatient and more likely to yeah. settle for a small reward that arrives sooner than a larger one promised at a later date. That's 100% true. That's like, don't go to the grocery store yeah, hungry. Oh, dude. I do. Yeah. Or if you need I to pee. I do it all the time. Dude, I know, like, You need to pee, you shouldn't go to the grocery store? No, no, like, even for me, like, the hunger and the pee thing's the same way. Where, like, if I'm gonna buy something online and I'm, like, stuck between two or three things, and I'm like, oh, shit, I gotta pee? Instead of buying, I'm, I'm just gonna go pee first because I'm usually gonna make a bad decision. I do that too. So I'm like, I gotta go pee so I can come back and like really look at what the hell's happening. Dude, I actually, I am so fucking weird. You guys know this already. But I punish myself, um, meaning like I'll, I'll, if I have to go pee and I'm doing a task, I will not let myself go pee until that task is done. That's how my wife is. I don't know why I do I that. I will pee in my pants. I could hold yeah, it in will. like for hours. My 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 pee's like I don't have to pee at all. Like not even there's nothing going on. And then all of a sudden I'm like I gotta go right now, right now. <laughs> oh my fun. god, you remind me of Isaac. He does that a lot. <laughs> It's, I, I don't think I'm gonna make it most times. I'm like, the bathroom could be like right there, and I'm like, ah, I gotta go, oh my god! It is, it is like that. It's scary. I don't hold that at all. I pee a lot at night, too. Oh. Like, like you wake up in the middle of the night? Two or three times in the middle of the night. Oh, it is the annoying. freaking- Stop drinking I, 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 I know, but I'd be thirsty. What the- I'm just so thirsty, man. Especially right before bed, I just have like this big water bottle. I'm just like, ah. Oh. And then I have to pee at like two, four, six. Wow. It sucks so bad. I hate peeing at night I too. Do. It's the worst, man. Cause like when you're laying down and you have to pee, you know you can't go all the way to sleep. Yeah. yeah. If you have pee at the back. That's when you splash the most. Yeah. Cause sometimes you don't want to turn the lights on. It's a whole thing. Yeah. If I'm about to go to bed and I feel like just like a little small like a twinkle of pee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just a tiny bit. I have to go pee yeah. because yeah. I am so fucking terrified of having one of those dreams. Where you're oh. going to the restroom in your dream and you accidentally pee in real life. Oh. I haven't had one since like my like I think I was like 20 the last time I did. I have those dreams all so the time. So do I. But I don't actually pee Same. in my dream. I'm relieving myself, but then I still have to pee. And in my in my dream, I'm like, wait, but I just went. But I still feel like I have to pee. I've touched myself. Well. <laughs> Okay. I've checked myself <laughs> in the middle of the night. Like I know I for sure pee. Cause in a dream you're yeah. peeing for like an hour. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like inception of pee. So and then you get up and you're like, whoo! <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And then you pee, it feels so good. Pee feels good sometimes. It Fuck does. yeah. I'm like, oh. Do you get the shivers? Yes. <laughs> I had a dream I was peeing on Methy hookers. And then what? I, and then when I woke up, thankfully I didn't pee the bed. <laughs> 